Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over the Teal Mask side quest for you to get a Blood Moon Ursaluna in your copy of Scarlet and Violet. So once you've made your way into Kitakamiya and you've made your introductions with everyone, you can go over to this area just west of Masui Town. This is the West Road as if you were heading towards the Apple Tree Hill. Now once you get to the corner of the road, you'll see this NPC character taking photos. Once you get her attention and speak to her, she'll then prompt you with the request that if you want to go any further with her on a side quest, that you have to have caught 150 Pokemon in your Kitakami Pokedex. So at this point do check how many pokemon you have caught and if you do need to catch any more just head out and around the kitakami region and fill up that pokedex until you've got 150. once you've done that head back and speak to perrin she will then initiate the side quest with you and start a battle using the likes of noctowl and a very familiar leafeon that her ancient descendant adaman from pokemon legends arceus actually used as one of his signature pokemon very nice hint for links between the two characters so once the battle is over perrin will then ask you to meet her in the timeless woods now, from your location, you'll be wanting to head to the northeastern area of the Kitakami map. If you head right to the northeastern point, you'll see this big wooded area, and this is exactly where you're wanting to head. So, make your way out there, and when you arrive, you'll see Perrin taking photos of some Pokemon on the outskirts of the wood. You'll initiate a battle with an Ariados. After the battle with Ariados, the side quest will initiate. And once you're ready, if you just go up to the tent and click A, you'll initiate the quest to go into the Timeless Forest and take pictures of 10 Pokemon in foggy conditions. A parent does give you a little bit of advice saying no running, no startling the Pokemon. So that is something to keep in mind when you're going into this quest. It can be a little frustrating when you first start it. Especially if you're running up to Pokemon, they will get spooked and they will run away and you might not see that Pokemon again for a very long time. And with only 10 Pokemon to take photos of, you've got to be very careful with your approach to each and every Pokemon within this area. And you need to make sure that you get close enough to the Pokemon. If you're not close enough to the Pokemon, Aaron will tell you to get closer to make sure that you get a better shot of the Pokemon. And you can't take a picture of a Pokemon running away either for it to register in the challenge. You can see here we got a nice picture of pseudo widow and then we get the spinner rack on the tree so these are great pictures but as you can see here in the example i'm just walking up to the pokemon very slowly rather than running or going at any pace and i think the big point about this quest is just having patience and the way i kind of got the 10 pokemon it didn't take very long at all was just to do a big loop around the area starting from one side you can't take photos of pokemon twice we did try and get another spinner rack but parent advises us that that is a pokemon that we've got already and this is a good example here of me going up to these hatena and spooking them i try and get a picture it's not too bad but as they're running away parent does not accept it for this challenge you can go over to the pond area and take a picture of Lotad and also Tynamo in the water as well. Pretty difficult to see, but easy enough to kind of spot and get over the top of to take a photo. The skull is in the area as well and another Pokemon that's easy enough to take a photo of. It does seem to do a countless loop, so if you can get ahead of it and just set yourself in a position where it is coming to you and take a photo of it as it comes towards your direction, and you should get a good snap of it. Make sure to check out the trees as well because Sea Dot do hang around on the branches of the trees and are easy enough to take a photo of, especially for this mission. And Litwick as well. They do hang around these areas and don't get spooked too easily. Just walk up to them like you would the other Pokemon. And you'll be able to get a nice picture of them for this quest. You do manage to get a Hoot Hoot in the trees as well. So along with the Sea Dot, Hoot Hoot going in and amongst the trees. And then this cave area towards the back of the Timeless Woods is full of Salandites. So you'll be able to go into this cave and spot them quite easily. There's one on the back wall you can take a photo of. They don't get spooked too easily, especially if you're not running around. And that will do it. That is our 10 Pokemon. And once you've done that, Perrin will inform you that the survey is complete and recall you back to where the tent area is. Then you'll have a little bit of dialogue with Heron about the photos and what the next mission is for you two going after the blood moon beast which is obviously the blood moon ursa luna 
and then the foggy conditions will start as you start to venture into the woods once again you'll hear some footsteps and parent says they must be huge and the next thing is the blood moon ursa luna appears out of the timeless forest here the one thing to note about this pokemon is you can't soft reset for it so it is shiny lock there's no way of getting this pokemon shiny in the games so don't try and reset on it thinking that you're going to get a shiny it's not possible unfortunately in the teal mask Aaron does spook the blood moon ursa luna and that prompts a battle with yourself so it goes into the battle you can't catch it in this first phase of the battle just make sure that you have something strong against a ground or a normal type so a fighting type water type or a grass type would be preferable against the blood moon ursa luna you're gonna have to watch out for its signature attack though as well it's a normal special type attack which does absolutely huge damage 140 base power it hits for so you can't use it consecutively but it is a very strong attack and it does have access to boosting its special attack through calm mind as well so something that you have to be aware of and once you've beat the blood moon ursa luna in this initial battle You'll be presented with the opportunity to catch it in whatever ball you would like. We do use a heavy ball to catch this Blood Moon Ursa Luna in. This feels very fitting for it. But let me know down in the comment section what Pokeball you have caught your Blood Moon Ursa Luna if you've caught it already or what you're planning to use if you are about to catch it. So after the battle and you've caught the Blood Moon Ursa Luna, Perrin will head back to Masui Town and you'll be prompted to kind of visit her back in that area. So if you fly back to Masui Town, and then head back to that original area where you spoke to her initially to start the side quest at the side of the road. And as another gift for helping her with a side quest, she'll give you a Hisuian Arcanine. So it's a way for you to get a Hisuian Arcanine in your game. They're not available to catch in the wild as well as a choice scarf item if you don't have one of those already. So this is a really good side quest for you to get two Pokemon, two exclusive Pokemon in the games the blood moon ursa luna and the hisuian arcanine and you get a nice little side item as well as a bonus the blood moon ursa luna is a ground and normal type pokemon it has a normal terror typing it has the blood moon signature attack with no earth power slash and calm mind and it is in a heavy ball so that is the side quest for how to get yourself the blood moon ursa luna in the teal mask pokemon scarlet and violet dlc part one i hope you found this guide useful make sure that you follow all the steps in this guide and some of the tips as well when you are in the forest for just snapping the pokemon with the camera because it can be quite frustrating if like the hatenas that we were going after run away and i didn't see them again for the entire time that i was in the forest and it would have been great it would have cut down my time a lot more if i'd just been a bit more patient approaching them like i wasn't in this video so good luck with the quest and good luck at getting your blood moon ursa luna if you found today's video useful please drop a like do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon scarlet and violet content and i'll see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye